Hi, fifth graders. We're here for chapter 20 of One Crazy Summer, but before we start, let's recap chapter 19. Here's what we know so far. Um, at the center, Brother Kelvin is very harsh and forceful when he teaches the children, and Sister Makumbu doesn't really approve of that. Um, we also learned that Brother Kelvin hurts um, Hirohito's feelings when he reveals what happened to Hirohito's father, Brother Woods. This connects back to when Yuna said that she knew what happened with regards to this, and remember when Delphine felt bad. Um, and then third, we learned that Delphine recalls a memory in the last chapter that relates to the civics lesson, um, when she tells of this encounter that she had with the police one summer when driving from Brooklyn to Alabama. Um, and it further paints this picture for the, you know, the struggle with inequality that was existing at the time period that the story is set in. All right, and so we always think about our lens. We know that we're thinking about character, uh, problem and solution. If there is one at this stage, we're thinking about any changes that occur in the character. And we're also thinking if there's any changes to the setting as we read the text. Just the same things that we always are on the lookout for. Okay, and so we're zooming in here with um, chapter 20. It's called Rally for Bobby. And so there's a picture here to the left of little Bobby. This boy, his name, he's not a boy, he was 17. Um, but the, the young man, his name was Bobby Hutton, and he was one of the Black Panthers at the time period that something really terrible happened to him. So we're going to read to find out a little bit more about this. It was hinted at earlier in a, in a previous chapter, but we're going to be a little bit more specific in this chapter. Okay, chapter 20, Rally for Bobby. When Sister Pat pinned the picture of Bobby Hutton to the wall next to the other revolutionaries, I learned who he was. I finally read about him in the Black Panther newspaper. The article reported how the people wanted to name the park after Bobby. The article also retold what had happened to him. I kind of remembered having watched the news with Big Ma a few months ago and hearing about the shooting in Oakland. Now the shooting seemed closer, more real. Bobby Hutton was the first member of the Black Panthers other than the leaders. He was so young, the Black Panther leaders, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale made him get his mother's permission to join. He was also the youngest Black Panther to die for the cause. He was only six years older than I was. Remember, she's 11, so 11 plus six is 17. The newspaper had said how the police ambushed the Black Panthers while they were in a car and how the Panthers fled inside a house for shelter. That there was a shootout, that the police fired at the Panthers and the Panthers fired at the police. That when little Bobby came outside to surrender and took off all of his clothes except for his underwear to show that he had no gun, they shot him anyway, over and over and over. That was this past April, two days after Reverend King was killed. And boys and girls, that was, that's a hard part to read. That's a hard part for students to hear. That's a hard part for a teacher to, to even mention to their, their students. So let's you know, kind of pause when we think about that. This, this text is written off of um, real events that took place. So while it is fictional, this is a human that this, you know, Bobby was real. This actually happened to him. So let's take just a moment of silence for that. Okay, let's continue on. After reading about Bobby Hutton, I had begun to look around at the Panthers who helped out on the center and the young ones on the streets patrolling or passing by. I had looked real hard at them and had then had seen that they were teenagers or were a little older like Sister Pat and Crazy Kelvin. I couldn't stand Crazy Kelvin never called him Brother Calvin or went out of my way to speak to him, but I didn't want to see him get shot because he was wearing his off the pig t-shirt. So like she has this, you know, element of empathy. Like she doesn't like hate him just because he's a little bit um, rough with the, with the students or the, with the children. Reading that article had made me both angry and afraid. Angry someone as young as Bobby had been killed and afraid that if he could get shot for being with the Panthers, maybe it was too dangerous for us to be at the Black Panther summer camp. After all, they weren't teaching us how to deal with the police for nothing. And I was tall for my age. No one would think that I was just a girl. Oof, here comes a problem. So Delphine is starting to realize that this is more than just a camp that they're at. That there is like real danger here for her and her siblings. Her mother instinct is kicking in. There's the lens that I was trying to look at earlier. Um, so she says, no one would think that I was just a girl going on 12. The police who patrolled the center could be chasing someone, burst in, shoot first, and ask questions later. Maybe we didn't have to come to the center to learn our rights and to have breakfast. If Cecile let me cook dinner in the kitchen, she let me fry some eggs or pour some cereal in her kitchen too. Being in Cecile's house might have been crazy. 
her house might not have been smothered with love, but being in Cecile's house was, the, uh, was at the very least safe. We were better off in that green stucco house with Cecile. What would Papa have said if he knew that I was bringing Vanetta and Fern to a summer school where police cars drove by to see what we were doing? I was supposed to look after Vanetta and Fern, not put them in danger. I wished I hadn't opened up that newspaper. I wished I could go right on thinking we were having breakfast, painting signs, and learning our rights. I wished I didn't know that I was marching my sisters into a boiling pot of trouble cooking in Oakland. But it was too late for wishing. I knew full well what I knew. You ever have that feeling like when you feel like you can't ever go back now that you know something? That's what Delphine's come confronted with right here. I could barely give Sister Bakumbu my full attention. She said we would be attending a rally two Saturdays from today, something about freeing Huey and naming the park across the street after little Bobby Hutton. Hearing Bobby Hutton's name had shaken me out of my thoughts. My hand shot up before I had words formed in my mind. I knew that rally meant protest and that protest could mean riot. And after all I read in the newspapers, I watched the new evening news, I knew a protest was never a love-in. Sister Makumba was still smiling when she recognized me. I bet she thought I was going to talk about the newspaper article or say something revolutionary. I said, I'm sorry, Sister Makumba, but my sisters and I cannot go to the rally. I knew I surprised her because I'm not an I can't kind of person. I might as well have said, we didn't come here for the revolution. Sister Pat said, don't worry, sis. I know Sister Nzilla. She'll let you go. I got over her saying she knew my mother when I barely knew Cecile. Besides, I had bigger fish to fry. See, like she's like a, a little bit hurt there. Like, how does even Sister Makumba know Cecile when I barely know her as, as, as a child? But anyway, she pushes on. Besides, I had bigger fish to fry. I said, it's not my mother who's saying no. I'm saying no. We can't go. Then Vanetta called out, we can too go to the rally. And Fern said, we surely can. Oof, this is a critical moment in Delphine's character. You know when she said, I'm not an I can't kind of person? Delphine is acting out of character here. She even talks back to Sister Bakumbu. This talking back is happening more and more and now that she's away from Big Ma. And also interestingly, usually her sisters echo back the same thing that she's mentioning, but this time, they, they were all against her. Vanetta said, we can too go. And Fern says, we surely can. Definitely a moment of uh, importance here where Delphine is acting out of character. Vanetta and Fern didn't know what they were saying. They just didn't want to be left out of any activity concerning those Angton girls or that Hirohito still wearing his same old Oakland Raiders jersey. Sister Makumbu asked for respect and order in the classroom. We quieted down. She said she would speak to me later, and she continued talking about the rally and honoring Bobby Hutton and freeing Huey. Then she said the very thing that was sure to defeat me. She said, We have been asked to do a special presentation at the rally. My sister's faces lit up. We could perform a play, do a group dance, or recite poetry. Or if anyone has a special talent to display, you can do that too. I was sunk. Talented display was enough to sway Vanetta and Fern. There was no way to keep Vanetta from throwing herself on stage after Sister Makumba said those three words. Vanetta is all ham and show. Any occasion, even a ride in the making, would have been good enough to perform at. Fern is no better. She sings like a bird, is cute, and like Vanetta, cannot resist the lure of applause and attention. I don't have anything to be vain about. I have no talent to show. Even if I did, I have no desire to throw myself before people for their applause. I dance because the lessons are paid for and Papa feels all girls should dance ballet and tap. I sing in the children's choir because Big Mom makes sure that we motherless girls enjoy all the pitying looks for the, from the church that we can spare, whether we want them or not. Later during free time, Hirohito and the boys started doing karate and jujitsu moves. The Angton girls huddled to talk about what they would do for their special talent. From the looks of their gesturing, they would dance an African dance. The other kids just played. I expected Vanetta to run off and join the Angtings, but Vanetta told Fern and me, we should sing a song. Fern added, we should sing a song and do a dance. Before I could say why we shouldn't, they started. We can wave our arms pretty like the Supremes and wear our hair like the Supremes or wild like Tina Turner and the Iquettes. Ooh, ooh, we can sing our song, Vanetta said. Yeah, our song, Fern said. I pretended I didn't know which song they meant, but I knew. Just to make sure I knew, Vanetta and Fern sang the first three words to dry your eyes on cue. No, I said. They sang louder. Fern's voice sweet and high, Vanetta's drippy and dramatic. No, I told them, we're not singing that. 
They ignored me and belted out the heartbreaking part where the mother must leave her baby. And then they sang the la-la-la parts. But now everyone looked our way, so I hushed Bonnet and Fern, whose eyes shone with life and sparkle. I had no hope of reeling either back to their good common sense. We are not singing that song, I said plainly to their why not pouting faces, I said. This presentation is for the people, for Bobby Hutton and Huey Newton. It's not for singing about your broken heart to your long lost mother. But they insisted on Brenda and the tabulations. They insisted on letting the world in on their longing for a mother who wouldn't cook a meal for them. I put my foot down. We cannot sing that song. Can too, they started, Vanetta said, and then she'll come to this talent show and see us on stage. Oh, they think they can get their mother to pay attention to them here. And she'll see how good we are, Fern said. It didn't seem right that they thought singing and dancing would change Cecile into someone who cried for her long lost daughters or fried pork chops and made banana pudding. Cecile wasn't that kind of mother, if you wanted to call her one at all. Her name might have changed, she might have been living on the other side of the country, but Cecile was plain old Cecile, just crazier and scarier than I remembered. I told them outright we could sing dry your eyes like Brenda and the tabulations and dance like the Icats. Cecile won't come to the rally and cheer us on. They said I was wrong about Cecile and wrong about what we could and could not sing for the talent show. I said, those people aren't rallying for a TV set. They're rallying to free Huey and to change the name of the park. The mayor, the judge, and the police aren't just going to say, fine by us, that's going to be, there's going to be trouble cooking at the rally. Let's go back here, though. Let's think about the character. Delphine is stuck between knowing the realities of the world, like all this background she knows about little Bobby and, and what has happened, and what the rally really means, and then also, on the other hand, what her sisters think about it. The sisters who see it as a performance, just, you know, a thing that they could get Cecile's attention by. It's a hard spot for Delphine to be in, for sure, right here. She's halfway a grown-up and halfway a kid. And it's, it's tough to be that. Vanetta sang, spoil sport, worry wart, and then Fern joined in. I said, fine, but I'm not singing with you. Sister Makumbu said she needed help with something. Everyone raises, raised his or her hand, but she called my name even though I kept my hand down. I couldn't say I was surprised. Sister Makumbu said, what's troubling you, Sister Delphine? Why don't you want to participate in the rally? Sister Makumbu, it's all dangerous. Just being here at the center is dangerous. She was silent for a while. I see. That meant that she wasn't going to lie to me. I wanted to still like her. I couldn't if she lied to me. I have to look out for my sisters, you know. Sister Makumbu said, we look out for each other. The rally is one way of looking out for all of our sisters, all of our brothers. Unity, Sister Delphine. We have to stand united. I was thinking, alive. We have to be alive. Wouldn't little Bobby rather be alive than be remembered? That's an important line there. Let's reread that. Wouldn't little Bobby rather be alive than be remembered? Wouldn't he rather be sitting out in the park than have the park named after him? I wanted to watch the news, not be in it. The more I thought about it, the more I had my answer. We were staying home tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after that, we certainly weren't going to be in no rally. She's really torn here because she knows, you know, it might be the right thing to do, but she really, really wants to keep her sisters safe. So let's talk about the secondary character real quick here. Several times now, Sister Makumbu has taken Delphine aside to listen to her or to offer her some advice or to convey a message in some kind of mature manner. Um, it's starting to seem that like she's playing a little bit of a motherly role in Delphine's life almost like in the absence of Big Ma being there, you know, we know Cecile's not nothing of a mother, she, Sister Makumbu's kind of stepping in to an extent to give her some of that motherly advice that she might need. So let's summarize this chapter, Rally for Bobby. Who was in the chapter and what new things did we learn about them? So it was Sister Makumbu and all the kids at the center, and we learned that there's going to be a rally for um, an, another character, Bobby Hutton, who is is he actually died so we learned a little bit more about what happened and how they're going to try to um, set up a park to memorialize him um, and then what seems important what are we learning about the problem here definitely we're learning that uh, delphine is at this turning point where she really feels like maybe the kids shouldn't be well not the kids her sisters maybe her sisters and her shouldn't be involved in this rally 
She doesn't want anything bad to happen. Um, so she's kind of making this decision to say, you know what, we're not going, even if there is a performance to, to be had. How does this chapter connect to what we read earlier? Definitely it um, connects to this growing idea that Delphine is starting to grow up. Um, she's starting to exhibit this different kind of uh, mindset than her sisters. She doesn't see the rally as just fun. She sees it as, you know, this place where something dangerous could happen, even though she does want to, you know, help out for the cause. She is really interested in it. She's just, her motherly instinct is kicking in too much and she wants to make sure her sisters are safe. So that connects to many of the different chapters that we've been reading so far. And the question that we want you to answer, what role does Sister Makumbu play in the development of Delphine's character? In other words, what does Sister Makumbu do that either helps or hurts Delphine? How does she develop Delphine's character in a positive or a negative way? What do you guys think? Use details from the text to support your response, as always. All right, we'll see you back for chapter 21 next time. Thanks, boys and girls.